Hey, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this video, I'm going to explain energy conservation for grade 11 physics students, starting with simple conceptual problems and then moving on to something like a roller coaster. All right, so let's start with something like a ramp. Now I'm going to put a ball here and I'm going to say it has some kinetic energy. Let's say, for example, eight joules and some gravitational potential energy. And those are the only two energies we're really going to talk about in grade 11 physics. But let's say some gravitational potential energy of 20 joules. And then some time later, the ball is down here. And let's say the potential energy has dropped to 10 joules. Would you be able to tell me how much kinetic energy there is? Now this is an energy conservation problem. Energy conservation says that the total energy is always conserved. Not the total kinetic energy or the total gravitational energy, but the total mechanical energy, which is the sum of kinetic energies plus potential energies. So in this situation here, where the ball is right here, our total energy would be 28 joules. And therefore that must remain constant throughout the entire motion of the ball down the ramp, which means down here, the total energy must still be 28 joules. So what value for kinetic energy must we add to 10 to get 28? The answer is 18 joules. All right, well, what if I had the ball all the way at the top and it started at rest, so the kinetic energy was zero joules? Could you tell me how much potential energy there is? In this case, 28 joules. Why? Because again, our total energy must be constant must be conserved at 28 joules for this example. All right, let's try another one, but this time we're going to write it out as equations. So here we have kinetic energy. And let's say we're starting with one joule. So we're going to start with a little bit of kinetic energy. And let's say we have potential energy of 21 joules. And somewhere down here, our potential energy is five joules. And I wanna figure out how much kinetic energy we have. All right, so let's call this point A and this point B. So writing it as an equation, I can say the total energy at A must equal the total energy at B. Now we can visibly see that the total energy is 22 joules so over here, what would we need to add to 5 to get 22? Well, 17 joules. But in order to deal with more difficult problems later on, how would we write this as our equation? Well, our total energy at A is the sum of our kinetic energy at A plus our gravitational energy at A. And that's going to equal our total energy at B which is again the sum of our kinetic energies at B plus our gravitational potential energies at B. And now we're just going to substitute what we know and solve for what we don't. So I don't know the kinetic energy at A, so I'm just gonna leave that as a variable, but I know the gravitational is five joules and I know the kinetic and gravitational at B, so it's one joule plus 21 joules. Therefore, bringing five joules to the other side of the equation, we get the kinetic energy at A as one plus 21, which is 22 joules, minus that five joules, which is 17 joules. All right, let's try this to be a little bit more difficult. We're gonna take a ball right here. And instead of giving you the kinetic and potential energies, I'm going to give you the speeds and the height. Now speed is related to kinetic energy, 
and height is related to gravitational potential energy. If you have a certain speed that's not zero, then you have a non-zero value for kinetic energy. And similarly, if you are at a certain height, you have a corresponding gravitational energy. So let's say it starts at rest at a height of, let's say, 10 meters. And sometime later, it's going to be at a height of, uh, let's say, 5 meters. All right, so let's call this uh, point A. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it point W if you want to. But let's just stick with A and B. So point A, and this will be point B. And what I want to know is the velocity at B. So let's do what we did before. The total energies at A must equal the total energies at B. Now remember, total mechanical energy is the sum of your kinetic energies plus your gravitational energy. Now kinetic energy has the equation of one half mass times speed squared. And at A, since our speed is zero, that's going to leave us with a kinetic energy at A of zero. So this term's actually going to be zero. And that's all going to equal our total energy at B. So our total energy, we have some height still, and we're going at some speed. So it is again the sum of our kinetic energies at B plus our gravitational potential energies at B. All right, now our equation for gravitational potential energy is EG equals MGH. Now for A, that is going to be MG times H at A, right? Because H at A is different from H at B. All right, so we're just substituting our equations for our different energies. Now kinetic energy at B, that is going to be one half mass times the speed at B, which is what we're looking for, squared, just using our kinetic energy equation. And once again, our gravitational equation is MGH, but since this is the gravitational energy at position B, this is going to be HB. So it's the same steps as before, but instead of being given these values of, say, 5 joules, 10 joules, 15 joules, or whatever, we're given height and speed, and we have to calculate what those values actually will be. But it's always good to write it as equations instead of calculating it first. And the reason for that is, notice that I haven't told you anything about this ball's mass. So you wouldn't actually be able to calculate either its gravitational energy or its kinetic. But if you look and see that there is mass in every single term. So if I divide it by every term by m, which you can do in math, then mass will cancel. And we don't actually need to know the ball's mass to be able to solve for the velocity at b. So let's go ahead and rearrange this equation. So I'll bring this term over to the other side. So we have gh of a minus gh of b, which is essentially our change in gravitational, is equal to 1 half the speed at b squared. Now, just because I like math, I'm going to factor out that g. So I'll write it as g times ha minus hb. You can multiply both sides of the equation by 2, and that'll equal vb squared. So now you can solve for vb by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. And we get that vb is equal to the square root of 2 times g, which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, times our change in height, which is 10 meters, so that's ha, 10 meters minus hb, which is 5 meters, so 10 meters minus 5 meters. And that gives us a speed of 9.9 .9 meters per second. 
And this is no different than if I were to replace this ramp with, say, a roller coaster that looks like this. It would be the exact same question with the exact same energies and the exact same solution. All you need to do is compare your energies, your total energies, at one point and set them equal to your total energies at another and to use your equations for each of those two energies. I hope this video helped. If it did, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you for the next video.